hello again. Me and Stoke with the Mastermind Games. Back for more Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. So this time I'm doing the retinue character of Grin Knuckles Brogan. And now, a couple of things to start with. First off, my girlfriend challenged me to paint him as an albino, so I'm going to attempt that. So never done that before, so I'm going to try starting with Fair Highlight. Now, as a retinue character, Knuckles is hired muscle, doesn't function like an explorer does, but also has to be recruited. As opposed to having his own kit or expansion, he's made from uh, just a standard Imperial Guard Ogren kit, which has enough parts for three models, so you'll be able to do him, his brother, uh, I think Dor Drog the Wall Brogan, and have parts left over for something else. So that's what these next three videos are going to be. This all first appeared in White Dwarf magazine and has been included in the Warhammer Quest annual. And that brush is not going to work. Need the right tool for the job. That one should suffice. Uh, uh, Knuckles was a fairly standard Ogren, uh, recruited to be a as a bodyguard and assigned to the um, Imperial commander he was assigned to was killed en route to their uh, mission site. And in transition, Knuckles was assigned to two subordinates simultaneously through a clerical error and while trying to keep both safe even though they were in separate towers failed anyway obviously because he had to be in two places at once and was scheduled for execution but his brother broke him out and they've been on the run they found their way to the blackstone fortress eventually and have been hiring themselves out as mercenaries. The quest to recruit actually involves his brother saving them from Urgulls, and completing it allows access to both. You can only take one retinue character at a time, but doing, but, um, uh, you know, my train of thought just went off the rails here, so. But stat-wise, Ogrims are stronger and tougher than even Space Marines, but generally have the mental capacity of a five-year-old. They are an abhuman and are tolerated by the Imperium because of their incredible strength and the fact that they don't think too hard, generally leading to loyalty about as blind as they come, as it gets. Now yeah, that's a pretty good start. So I'm going to let this dry and move on. Okay, I did a second coat of that fair highlight on the body to fix some of the splotchiness. So it's still there, and I'm gonna just leave it, I think. So next, leather white 09062. If I can get it to cooperate. This is one that's about empty. I tried to get a replacement, but I wasn't able to. It's from my favorite source. Now I have to wait a little bit, but it should be enough to do the job here. So this kit also makes a special character called Nork Deadhog, and while I don't collect Imperial Guard, since I had the spare parts, I went ahead and made the special character. This, uh, the article from White Dwarf as well as Blackstone Fortress Annual actually shows uh, Knuckles with a uh, shirt on, but um, next is going to be alien purple, but I decided uh, 
since I want to make the special character, I wound up using those body parts. So I went with this, and I think I'm going to put some kind of tattoo on here. And since this guy is uh, on the run, I am doing wild color schemes, though. Nork will have a standard Cadian when I uh, get to him after I finish the Drogon Brothers. Set a guy up for failure and hold him accountable for failing. Let's see here, that belt buckle is metal. after I had already glued on this shoulder pad that what would be what would it be bolted to? Well, probably his flesh. He's already got a piercing over here, so why not? The Imperium is definitely into pain. So other uh, kits that can be used for Blackstone Fortress from the standard line are flash kits to give yourself an orc retinue character, a uh, arco flagellant, and I collect orcs anyway, so I can just use, so once I get some flash kits, I can just use that. So I will get uh, some arco flagellants specifically for the one for, to use the one for Blackstone Fortress, but also you can play on easy mode, sort of using a single explorer, but that explorer can be a Harlequin Solitaire, which again I will eventually get just for that purpose, as well as in a White Dwarf magazine exclusively for now. This article came out after the annual for Blackstone Fortress and an Imperium Eversore Assassin. So I've had an interest in the Inquisition and the Officio Assassin on for a while anyway, so this gives me an excuse to kind of get into that. So that will be done eventually. Chaotic Red. Those knuckles is screaming in rage at whatever he's shooting at. And like uh, explorers, retinue characters do have a secret agenda side and an inspired side, but they cannot gain inspiration, so they only become inspired by fulfilling their secret agenda, which involves, for both the Drogon brothers, their clients being injured in some way. Can't quite remember what off the top of my head, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry before I move on. So back in a bit. Oh boy, and my camera's acting up. All right, I'll figure it out. Okay, I think I forgot to put one of my lights on the last clip. Uh, fire orange zero nine zero zero six. Gonna have to do two coats of this, so we'll do one of them off camera. But are these Ashra Militarum uh, compliant uh, colors? Prob well, to be fair, there are so many worlds in the Imperium, there's probably one that uses something like this. But two, the Brogan Brothers are on the run, wanted for. Uh... Oh boy, what is the. Well, Knuckles for his failure and his brother 
for springing him from prison before he could be executed. But so they don't really uh, probably wouldn't care. And I'm doing my explorers and all these uh, eclectic colors anyway, so fits in uh, with them nicely. Don't think that paint's mixed quite right. Need a little more anyway to finish up. A similarly vibrant and impractical color scheme. And just funny would be an Imperial Guard regiment based on the concept of human targets. In other words, bright color schemes, bullseyes on their backs. Almost dropped in there. Get the underside of the shoulder on where it's exposed, but uh, that's not getting a whole lot of attention. It's not the focus of the model. Okay. Then some bright color for the, uh, I think it's called a ripper gun. I have to double check. And again, I got this kit exclusively to do the Blackstone Fortress retinue characters, so I do not know a whole lot about the Imperial Guard and most of the stats I've seen are what's printed in the little assembly guide that comes with it, with the kit. Uh, no, I just hit the magazine by mistake. I want to touch that up. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. It's pretty good. I'll apply a second coat off camera. I'll come back in a bit, and my camera is acting up again. And right in the program. Oh, that was gonna be a cursed video. Okay. Next, Stormy Gray 09088. Almost forgot my own color palette there for a minute. But this mixed with some uh, black as a shader is a nice uh, military looking gray kind of color. Let's get that on the magazine here. I'll pick out the visible shells in it later. Get this secondary handle to stabilize. Which, when you think about it, looks a bit awkward for a firearm, but uh, yeah, obviously works for him. Hmm. You know what? This is fine.
This is physically hollow, so I'm putting a little bit inside it as well. Okay, so let's see here. That's it for that color. I've only got two base coats. No, no. I'm wrong. I've got three. No, no, I've got two base coats left. I'm getting mixed up. Uh, tarnished Steel 09205. So I've got three base coats left. I get the belt buckle. And this uh, plaque here with the uh, iconography on it, the bayonet, of course. And this iconography here. Then I'm going to take a little uh, Phoenix Red, I think, 09005. And I'm probably going to need to do two layers of this, but uh, this might be a water can on his belt. I see it as more of a gas can. <laughs> Probably going to want to do a second layer off camera. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. You know what? I don't know if I'll need to do a second layer. That looks pretty good. And I'll take a bit of a gamble and take old bronze 09197. Yeah, he doesn't have any grenades. And then uh, I know it's not as visible, but um, just getting the ammunition in the magazine is, that is visible. All right, and this ring on his shoulder here, his bicep. And I think that's base coats. So I'm going to let that dry completely and then start shading. But uh, so far, so good. And I just dropped 600 frames in the blink of an eye. Holy cow. The joys of technical difficulties strike again. So, well, he doesn't going to figure out how to stop that from happening. But um, I'll be back in a minute to uh, start shading. Okay. Time to shade and hopefully this goes a little better. One and white, zero nine zero six one. Now I haven't forgotten about the teeth. I'm just gonna do those as a detail at the end. So they haven't been forgotten. But thinning with one part water to one part paint. And this is go on the mohawk here. Just a little stripe along there. And the red brick, 09001. I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of the mouth now. Steel 09205. There is a big windstorm going on outside, so that's what any background noise might be.
here in the matte black. And this one's uh, running low, and I've got a replacement ready. Now with particularly dark colors like this, you'll need two to three parts water to one part paint. Otherwise, it'll just completely muddy up your base coat. In a technical sense, I am covering my base coats with the shader, but I'm thinning it enough that the uh, base coat does come through at least somewhat. Taking the most care. I'm going to go ahead and get a bit of this into that um, slot there, the feed mechanism. I think this is called a ripper guy. I believe I mentioned that, but I can't. A little scramble right this second. But I don't know if it's supposed to be caseless or not. In fact, I thought I caught somewhere that bolt guns were supposed to be caseless, but I guess not. So it's also possible I only thought I read that somewhere. forgot about his belt buckle. Get back in there with the black and steel and get that. And then fire red 0904. I'm going to go ahead and get the gas up. I'm holding my brush backwards. Oh boy. It has really been a long day if I'm doing that. Go ahead and get the gas can. Okay. Let that dry and uh, move on to that. Well, and I'm dropping frames like madness again. I wound up dropping 666 on that last one before I got to stop. <laughs> kind of weird on that, I know, but uh, this one. Trying to get this to focus a little bit. Uh, not really. Okay, uh, this is going to fight me now. All right. Back in a bit. Okay. Next. Let's see here. Yeah, let's do it this way. Aged Pewter 09196. My camera looks a little funny. It's because my tripod's about shot. It's going to be a couple of days before I get a new one, so. I'm not sure how many videos are going to be kind of off-kilter like this. Well, to be fair, more off-kilter than usual. I still have a lot of work to do on my cinematography and all that stuff. Again, one-to-one -one ratio of paint to water and just go over all these shells. Take Phoenix Red 09005 again and shade the orange. I think I'm gonna make this a little thinner than I usually do. Just for the sake of making sure I don't drown out the orange all that much, I do uh, like it.
was trying to think maybe I should have started a bit uh, light, a shade lighter, but uh, it's done, it's done, so I'm just going to live with the consequences. My health and frames again. It's trying to drop frames on me. Let's see if I can get this to, uh, come on, play nice. Good gravy. All right. I will get this all figured out eventually. I will eventually get videos with none of these little problems, but that's uh, <laughs> going to take a lot of work still. I am making gradual progress, but uh, <laughs> I still have a lot of work to do on that. And it's decided to drop another half a dozen frames or so. And it doesn't want to focus either. Fine. Just finish up shading the pants, tan the boots, and just uh, call it good. And let this all dry up and move on and just go from there. There. I wonder if I, it's paint or if I got a chip of something in there. That is a chip of something. Okay. Okay. Just try to get this finished before something else happens. dry completely, then I uh, move on to the next. I'm going to stay dry, I'll do one or two at a time. So I am getting there. My focus is clearly, well, well there we go for a half a second at least. Getting there. Okay. Next, actually this should be the second to last. Nightshade Purple 09022. So, for some reason, with the particular face, the mohawk, and my color scheme, uh, this uh, knuckles here reminds me of uh, Cotton Hill from that show King of the Hill, the disgruntled uh, World War II vet. Hmm, so the orange isn't completely dry, but I still think I can go ahead and do this. Tiger stripes were the first thing that popped into my head. Tiger stripe pants were the first thing that popped into my head here for the color scheme. The purple was an idea to just offset that and get something completely different. But now that I think about it, I think I used this a very similar color scheme on one of my orc vehicles a while back. Yeah, but regardless. The albino skin tone was a suggestion from my, well, suggestion and challenge from my girlfriend, and uh, I think it makes work quite well, in fact. So there we go, that's all the purple, a little more right there on the bag, and let this dry. Then I can do the skin tone, then I can start some details and get to highlighting and go from there. Okay, last bit of shading, Fair Skin 09047. Hmm, this seems to be another one I'm going to have to uh, 
get replaced soon. Just letting it flow into all the available nooks and crannies of the flesh here. It will really help accentuate and pop the muscles when I did. I forget to. Uh, I think I might have forgotten to shade part of the purple. I'll have to uh, take care of that. I think I forgot his wristbands. But uh, regardless, doing this will uh, sink down into the uh, folds of the skin, those bulging muscles, and when combined with the highlight will help make them pop. So we'll just get this, and I'll fix my little uh, oversight with the purple off camera. Or, you know what, never mind, I'll just get it on camera real quick. Being careful around the mouth, because we don't want to get this in the mouth. Alright, I think that's got that. So I'm taking that nightshade purple 09022 again really quick. Uh oh. I need to get some of this on the uh, bolts on his belt. Now, between the Brogan Brothers and the Explorers Rain and Rouse Ratley Twins, I'd say Blackstone Fortress has just about every kind of uh, ab human covered, at least the ones that are permitted by the Imperium at any rate. Okay, let that dry completely, and then I can start uh, detailing and highlighting. Oh, the camera is not like me for terms of focus. Oh, there we go for a little bit anyway. Alright, let's see if this thing plays nice with me. Let's see. We'll see. Now light. Now I can do something that's funny here. Well, I guess not funny, but definitely atypical for what I do. Okay, this brush is shot at this point, but I have a shiny new pack. I've just been uh Pulling off using it until absolutely necessary. So, I'll put you all up in here. My entire. Ah, boy. I got a big mess off camera with my. Uh, I forgot to figure out something else with my brushes. So. I'm gonna just carefully, using a detail brush, dot in the eyes. I think I might use too much white right here. That's alright. It's okay. I can work with that. Now, Vampire Red. I am switching to a dry brushing technique now. So I'm going to take a Ragged Feather brush. In this case, the brush I've been using to do all the base coats with, with which is now uh, beat up enough I can use it for dry brushing. Yeah. No water. Straight paint only. Rub most of that out on a paper towel until it looks like there's next to nothing left. I'm just gonna get the tongue here. Really, bleed does seem to be ready to be affected. Now I'm gonna go back into that matte white. Just get the teeth. There we go. Matte black. A little dot of it for now. And I'm 
broken frames again, and this camera does not want to focus right now. Let me just give us a minute. Let me throw in a little more light and see if that helps. Uh, not. Well, there we go. There we go. Oh, the joys of technical difficulties. So I'm just going to carefully. Die in the pupils. Let's clean that brush out and go one bigger here. Oh. Brush is getting really out of control on camera here. Fine. Not the one I wanted, but it's going to do. It's going to a bigger. Oh boy, that's. I had to control the bigger one, and just I'm going to get the inside of the gun barrel here. Now, Ghost Worm. Now, Lennon White 09061. Should be good for one more. Going against the, going on the skin, going against the raised areas like the knuckles. Refreshing the paint as necessary directly from the pellet in some cases. And I'm dropping a ton of frames again. Alright. I'm going to finish up just the highlights on the skin, and then I'm going to see if I can fix whatever's going wrong with my computer because I want to make this work. areas and I'm gonna stop here see if I can get my computer to play nice with me and come back <sighs> good gravy okay we are trying this again and seeing if my computer decides to play nice with me this time uh, actually I'm going to do tarnished brass 0919 first Let's see it. I decided to start focusing as soon as I start recording. Hmm. You get joys of technical difficulties. Strike again. This purple zero nine zero two four. Oh, I definitely got the bridge's nose right. Yeah, this brush might be just about done as well, but I'll do for just one more here.
uniform gray. The clip is working a little better, but the focus is still fighting me too much. Definitely going in the right direction, but there's still more to be done. Yellow zero nine zero zero seven. I maybe should have used this as my base coat for a brighter orange, but gone uh, way too far to change that now. go against the folds in the cloth. So good on the frame rate right, right now, but having as many problems as I've had so far definitely makes me nervous. Now a little fire orange zero nine zero zero six mist. Finish up the gas can here. Again, gas can is how I choose to interpret this. I just noticed this gap here. Huh. Like, didn't notice it during assembly, didn't notice until just now. Huh. Oh well. Not a lot I can do about it anymore at this point. Next. True silver zero nine two zero seven. Oh, and I'm dropping hundreds of frames a second again. So I stabilize out. Kinda, maybe, no, maybe. Stabilize. Eh. Oh well. All right. Try again. Okay, here we go. Again, true silver 09207. The issues I have had with this video have just a lot of more consistent problems that I'm trying to figure out. This frame drop thing is the second worst. It's annoying, but unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that. Not until I figure out uh, what's causing it, the blur issue and focus problems, that I can at least actively try to fix a little more, which I am doing, but not there yet. Just holding up that blade, and it feels the head on this brush feels loose, so it might come off soon. That's something that can happen to glue holding the head onto the handle can come off, can wear out and come off. They don't exactly, they don't always use a good quality on this. 
Now that's the highlight. Nope, nope. I'm getting ahead of myself. There's one more highlight. Ghost White 09063. Getting a little ahead of myself because I still need to highlight his hair. it for highlights. Now a few more details in matte black. I want to try and see if I can get all this at once here. We'll see. I'm, we'll just see. Oh, I've taken something a little longer. right there. Seems my brush container has blown up a little bit. Mm. Same amount of water as a base coat. Just doing some tiger stripes. Just enough to give the impression that he's got uh, tiger stripes on. Which was one of the strongest impressions I got when I started here. This model. And that's good. kind of match. And a little more here. I like that. I like that. That is just gaudy enough. Now, pull out a flathead brush. The same matte black. And I'm starting to drop frames again. And I am beyond caring at this point. So, just going to line the base. Being careful where the feet come in close. All right, let that dry. Then I can uh, add some basic material to it. Okay, time to base. It's all dried up. Hopefully I don't have the same kind of problems I've been having uh, these last few clips, but we'll see. Huh. White glue and water. Like, oh, it might be kind of clogged up. Oh, there we go. Generous and all both. I'm just recycling some of my paint water for this. This will be fine. Get that mixed thoroughly.
keeping the brush nice and wet during all of this. This is essentially going to be a sacrifice on the part of the brush. So just dedicate one to it and leave it at that. Give it a dip in the basic material now, which this is a rock debris or a talus, a mix of fine and coarse. Just brushing off the excess. And I'm taking a separate brush that is dry and just pushing it away from areas I don't want it just going, pushing down. That's pretty good. So going to let that dry or set for 20 to 30 minutes. Then I can seal it and wrap up. Alright. Last step I can do on camera. The absolute final step will be to varnish this model and thin it once this dries. I'm taking a sprayer brush and adhesive. This is Scenic Cement by Woodland Scenics. I'm just using a glass eyedropper to drip it into my basic material. It'll allow some time for this to set first, otherwise this will put divots in your talus, flocks, and whatever you're going to use. And just realize I got some on the handle there that I catch, so... Until then, I am Ethan Stuckey with Mastermind Games, signing out.